All right, so we're continuing now with track and field on the Sportsmax Zone. It's no secret that Jamaica's high school chance attracts the attention of many across the globe. Some of them get the chance to come to the land of wood and water to experience the atmosphere and see the talent up close and personal. One such person is former president of the Caribbean Association of National Olympic Committees, CANOC, Brian Lewis. He joins us in studio. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to have you here live. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here in Jamaica. Yeah, land of wood <laughs> and water. So how was your experience at Champs? You've been here before for Champs, right? Yeah, but long enough that it was almost like coming for the first time. It was awesome. Um, you know, it, 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 Champs has kind of grown in its stature to outside the Caribbean now with, with different athletes from, from different uh, countries, especially within Canuck. Mm -hmm. um, it was awesome. I mean, you know, I was hearing somebody comments uh, before I came on there in the room, but, um, you know, as, as an outsider looking in, I mean, it's awesome. It, it, it's probably one of the, it, it, it's a fantastic reality show. It's tremendous theater. And yeah. uh, on our television, something you all shouldn't take for granted. Keith Wellington and his crew were fantastic. They really um, opened the door for us, the trainer, and to make a delegation. But of course, because it's a uh, ministry related, I can't get into the specific that for the ministers. <laughs> yeah, I understand. <laughs> yeah. And you know, what I felt also very, very proud about is we had Trini athletes walking away with gold medals. It yeah. felt good to see them come into Jamaica and able to get a gold medal. I think that, that that's. Fantastic. Now, a very important point that we take for granted, there has been such traditional rivalry, for sure, between the red, black and white and Jamaica. Yeah. And um, it, it, was, it shows the power of sport um, mm -hmm. and, and that role that sport is playing now beyond just the field that you have Trinidad and Tobago, Jamaica, Jamaica reaching out to the other countries to share its knowledge. They are so confident. They are so confident in their ability and they really that they're good. not worried about opening their doors to competition. I think that's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, can you compare for us your experience at Champs over the weekend with the Trinidad and Tobago Secondary Schools Championship? Because in the Caribbean, because our sporting infrastructure is underdeveloped, a lot of our countries depend on school sports to actually play that embryonic role in developing athletes so, to, to, high, to high levels. I know Grenada has a very big schools championship. The Barbadian school championship is also big. Uh, TNT school championship, I've never got the impression that it, it has been that big an event on, on the calendar. You've been very kind. No, it's, <laughs> it's right. and cheese. I usually and, am. I usually it's am. and cheese yes, in yes. terms of track and field in track particular. And field, yes, track. I know the football I, is pretty yeah, big. If I have to yeah. draw a comparison, yes. it would be the intercall football. Yes. But uh, certainly track and field, it, it's, I mean, one for sure they don't get the, the kind of crowds that you get, the interest, because track and field in particular in Trinidad and Tobago, and that has been the subject of intense discussions the last five days, is club. So you have the clubs at the top of the pyramid. Yes. Here in Jamaica, from what we have seen, it, it's really from the high schools, the schools themselves, the school system, from, I'm talking the about alumni. School. It from could actually run without mm -hmm. government. Yeah. And that's what's fantastic about it. Yeah. It's such a long and powerful history. Yeah. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. I said, of course, there are always things that can improve. But I want to say this. What I appreciate from, with Keith Wellington and ISSA yes, is their emphasis on athlete welfare, recognizing that they're dealing with teenagers. So I know that the efforts to adjust the program is aimed at that. Yeah. I know that Atto Bolden, who had served... Briefly, I would say, as a senator in, in Trinidad and Tobago, probably about 10 years ago, has had a lot to say about Trinidad and Tobago's lack of foresight in developing, developing its track and field. I know based on your Ouch, role, but okay, your, go ahead. Your, your role as an Olympic committee man, um, the specific sport track and field is not directly under your, your portfolio. But what are your views on Atto Bolden's continued criticism of uh, Trinidad and Tobago's athletics administration and its 
I would have to say lack of success because um, things haven't been as good as we have seen it in the past. Well, everything goes in transition, ebb and flow. Trinidad and Tobago as a society on the whole is going through its challenges now. And what you see with track and field and sports is a reflection of where Trinidad and Tobago is at now. So let Lisa, do not be accused of dodging the question. All criticisms are valid. It, it keeps the administrators on their toes. But the, the Trinidad, it's easy from the outside looking in to give constructive criticism. But, but what really not happens, on the outside, was he? Huh? Atobolan wasn't on the outside looking in, was no, he? No, I say that and I say that without Atta Bolan is tremendously respected. What I'm saying is, yes. in terms of the day-to-day -day runnings of what goes on in track and field, in Trinidad and Tobago. I mean, there are a lot of old traditional habits and mindset that has worked over the years in some people's minds. Um, and, you know, it's just a matter of conversation and discussion. I'm a big believer in nothing happens before it's time. And Trinidad and Tobago for years suffered a significant case of affluenza. You know, it, it, money was flowing in the economy in however ways. There are lots of distractions outside of football, cricket. Yeah. Um, a lot of young people have distractions. Crime is a significant issue. There are a lot of socio-cultural issues for Trinidad and Tobago that, that is sort of new. Yeah. and causing a problem. But admittedly, Bran, as far as facilities would be concerned, I think Trinidad and Tobago is the envy of a lot of other Carib CARICOM countries regarding the athletes um, and what they have to train with. I know your cycling velodrome is regarded as one of the best in the hemisphere, not just in the Caribbean, in the entire hemisphere. Yeah, you have definitely. more high-quality football stadia than anywhere else in, in CARICOM. And facilities-wise, probably because of the affluence that you spoke of earlier on. Trinidad and Tobago is not short on that. So I think looking on from the outside, um, there are questions about why isn't TNT having more success in sport. Yeah, people but expect better. Facilities don't win medals. I know that. Right. So but that it, it encourages... It speaks to... Well, <laughs> let me say this. I think that the, now that things may not be as buoyant as it was econ economy-wise, there was more, people are more interested in. And, and that always happens. Things like music, art, drama, sports become an important aspect of, of distraction and uh, focus and attention. Yeah. But it is what it is. Um, we are working, they are working on it. That's yeah. all I can say. I, I know that 10 years ago, well, not quite 10 years ago, in 2015, when you had just become President to of the Trinidad and Tobago Olympic Committee from La Romani, um, there was a big press conference announcing a push for Trinidad and Tobago to win gold at least 10, 10 gold medals by 2022. Well, you 20, won zero, 24. 24, you mm -hmm. won zero last Olympics, last, yeah. only one in, in, in Brazil in 2016. So that projection appears to be in a spot of bother. Well, COVID, um, and... and Again, but that's for the new president of the Trinidad and Tobago. Dan, Dan Henderson. To, yeah. Dan Henderson. To, yes. to, to, deal um, with that. That, that's to, to, that, to say, yeah, or nay on that, yeah. I'm still a believer in 10 goals 2024. 20, it may be 10 goals 2028, 20, 10 goals 2032. 20, yeah. But at the level of an Olympic committee, just like Jamaica does, you have to yeah. aim. Yeah. And you have to have aspirational goals. Yeah, and based on the events, and I know the ministers and whatnot were here, do you think that, you know, um, they'll get some sort of motivation, the talks will be beneficial, that, you know, Trinidad and Tobago, we can start to see um, our athletes becoming more interested, because I think it starts in school. What I notice here is from preschool, the kids are running, you know, they're, they're taking part in these sporting activities. Back home, it's a bit different. That's right, you will know that, you know, there are so many distractions. But, but, but Lan, if I may say so, the role of sport now is bigger than just the narrow focus on the field of play. Whether it is dealing with issues of racism, um, you know, 
all of these things because it creates the environment that that it's not always easy for young people moving from the Caribbean into the big outside world. And that's why I'm so happy of what is happening now between Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago and that proposed MOU, which I would tell everybody, because everybody in the Caribbean watches Sports Mark Zone. Mm -hmm. um, stay tuned. You know, the, the, the MOU between the, the, the directed by the Prime Minister of Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago, I think it will set the stage and be a catalyst for greater um, cooperation and collaboration. Great. That will address some of the various gaps we have across the region because at the end of the day, when we go and compete against the outside world. We support each other. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah definitely. We do. The brave will fall but not yield. Well, Brian, as always, it's a pleasure to have you stopping by I, on the Sportsman Zone. I see some KC men got to him. Don't, don't. Listen, I don't know where he picked that up from, but don't let them, don't let them convert you. Thank you so much, Brian. And of course, we'll talk again soon. Thank you very Former much. Former president here, Brian Lewis. Now he's KC. <laughs>